During World War II, U.S. federal debt surged to around 120% of GDP, levels very similar to today. But after the war, the economy underwent a massive industrial expansion, which helped the debt-to-GDP ratio fall sharply. We saw a similar effect during the 1990s internet boom. Strong productivity growth led to rapid GDP expansion and a declining debt ratio. Now with federal debt sitting at $37 trillion, we may be approaching another inflection point. This time, powered by the almighty artificial intelligence. If AI delivers even a modest boost to productivity, the resulting GDP growth could cause a steep and sustained drop in the debt ratio, just like we've seen in past technological revolutions. Let's start with two important facts. The Moody's recently downgraded the US long-term issuer ratings to AA1 from AAA. That means US is seen now as less credible borrower now. But at the same time, we're seeing the Congressional Budget Office forecasts, the AI could have a dramatically positive impact, given their forecast we've just mentioned. The US federal debt now stands at $37 trillion. And although the nominal figure is alarming, the more important metric is the debt to GDP ratio, which currently hovers around 123%. Historically, High absolute debt levels are common in large economies, but what matters is whether the economy grows fast enough to support that debt. Japan, for example, runs a debt-to-GDP ratio near 250%, nearly double the U.S. debt ratio. The ultimate problem that led to all of this is the U.S. fiscal policy that failed to stabilize the debt path. The 2024 fiscal policy tells you everything you need to know about why the debt keeps exploding. The U.S. brought in $5 trillion in revenue, mostly from income taxes and payroll taxes, but spent over $6.7 trillion. That's a shortfall of $1.8 trillion in a single year, during a time when the economy wasn't even in recession. In other words, the government is running crisis-level deficits without a crisis. Interest payments alone ate up almost $900 billion, nearly as much as health care. That shows just how expensive it is to operate that massive debt. The underlying principle is fairly straightforward. To improve the debt-to-GDP ratio, either reduce the debt or increase GDP. A strong indicator for upcoming debt development is the consumer sentiment. And as you know, this is highly important given the fact that consumption is a major part of the GDP. To be specific, the household spending accounts for roughly 70% of US GDP. Also, the inflation expectation is very high right now, both of these factors contributing to growing fear related to growing debt. However, that is mostly given the current market's shock and the ongoing trade wars related to tariffs. The consumer sentiment and inflation could easily switch directions sharply once AI actually starts visibly showing signs of higher productivity. The 30-year Treasury bond is one of the main ways the US government borrows money for the long term. When investors buy these bonds, they're lending money to the government, which pays them interest over 30 years. The yield on these bonds reflects how confident investors are in the government's ability to repay its debt. Recently, these yields have been rising which is a clear problem. It makes borrowing more expensive, not just for the government, but for businesses and households too. That slows down spending and investment, and over time, puts pressure on economic growth and jobs. This is where monetary policy plays a role. The Federal Reserve can influence yields by adjusting the money supply. When it increases the money supply through quantitative easing, it buys long-term treasuries, which pushes yields down. When it reduces the money supply, quantitative tightening, it stops buying or sells treasuries, which pushes yields up. This is why the deflated M2 money supply and 30-year treasury yields often move in opposite directions. More money supply means lower yields, less money supply means higher yields. Right now, in 2025, 30-year treasury yields are at their highest levels since 2007. It directly reflects the sharp tightening of the M2 money supply over the past two years. When the Fed reduces liquidity in the system, demand for long-term treasuries weakens, pushing yields higher. That's exactly what we're seeing today as the Fed continues to pull back from the massive monetary expansion it carried out in response to the COVID crisis. If we look back, the pattern is clear. In 2008, during the global financial crisis, the Fed responded by rapidly expanding the money supply through aggressive quantitative easing. It bought large amounts of treasuries, injected liquidity into the system, and brought long-term yields down quickly. That helped stabilize markets and lower borrowing costs across the board. Today's environment is the opposite. Real money supply is contracting, and as a result, long-term yields are climbing. If the Fed were to switch back to easing and expand the money supply again, those yields would likely fall, just as they did in the past during major crises. Back to the CBO forecast, it shows two scenarios. The red line is the baseline projection, 
where debt keeps rising and hits around 156% by 2055. The purple line shows what happens if AI drives stronger productivity. Debt stabilizes closer to 113% of GDP. As mentioned, historically major boosts in U.S. productivity came from powerful general-purpose technologies. During these peaks, total factor productivity grew up to 3% per year. Right now, AI could play a critical role in reducing the U.S. fiscal deficit, for example, just by cutting healthcare costs, the second largest category of federal spending. Tools like AI-powered diagnostics, already showing performance equal to or better than human doctors in areas like imaging and data analysis, can automate tasks, reduce errors, and eliminate unnecessary treatments. If AI boosts productivity by just 0.5% annually, it could lower the U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio by over 40 points by 2055. Higher productivity means faster GDP growth, which shrinks the debt ratio even if total debt keeps rising. All without cuts or new taxes. That's how AI could solve the debt crisis. As always, this is not financial advice or a recommendation to buy or sell. We provide you with our view and take on macro analysis with regard to the markets. Thanks for watching. This is Glenius.